Live. Hi. Yeah, maybe all the other people. Everybody, thank too. you for joining us tonight. Um, it's a very sacred night because it's Halloween. Well, it's not quite Halloween. We're coming up on Halloween. And why is it sacred? It's sacred because the veil is thin. So what does that mean, the veil is thin? Um, the veil is thin because it means that we're much more capable of connecting to spirit on this night, on this weekend, on this week. And when we, uh, we can channel easier, we can hear spirit, we can understand spirit, um, because it is a kind of what we call a thinning of the veil. They can hear us and we can hear them. And that connection of that energy, we're coming up on that full moon, um, that energy uh, brings us to think about the times of our ancestors. And ancestors just doesn't mean mom and dad, and grandma and grandpa. Ancestors means all of the ancestors that we have their DNA in us. So it goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. That DNA is uh, prevalent in thousands and thousands of people. It propagates. So for every uh, family that has had children, then that family has had children, and that family has children, and that family has children. So you're talking about your DNA connecting thousands and thousands and thousands mm. of years ago. The third thing, besides your just people that you know, your relatives and your friends that have passed away, and those people who have your DNA for thousands and thousands of years ago, the third thing we connect is our spiritual family. Mm. And our spiritual family is a connection that goes beyond. Like I like to think that we are a spiritual family. For example, we kind of connect on that soul level. And your spiritual family can be in a number of different fashions. It can be people that you connect in and jive with, okay? But it could also be people who you have reincarnated in. And so we may be friends now or connected in a different way or even relatives, but in a past life, we have been more other things to each other. So, for example, you know, I could have been your mom. I could have been your sister. I could have been your best friend. Um, you know, I could have been your lover. I could have been... Um, you know, you could be my daughter, I could have been your mother, a grandmother, um, I could have been your teacher, and then and now, could it continue. So there's so many deep soul relationships that that connection comes in. So when the veil is thinner, not only do we connect to those relatives and that connection to the DNA, we connect to that soul family, which, you know, I... It really has to be millions and millions of people that we have connected mm -hmm. to throughout. And in Kabbalah, we talk about that this is, that we are one soul. You know, the soul of Adam Kaman. And we are one soul. And this is kind of what it means, is that we have just gotten not just one life, and not just this life, and not just the people that you know, but those connections that go out together and together, together. And um, those connections in there like really, really uh, deepen the fact that we are one planet, <laughs> one mm -hmm. peoples, and that when we hurt other people on this planet, we all feel it. We feel that connection. We feel that sadness. And we actually hurt ourselves because we hurt the soul family. We hurt in so many different connections. It's kind of why I don't um, hold any prejudice for anybody for anything. 
because we have been everything. Um, you know, I have been a man and a woman. I have been gay and I have been straight. And I have been a mother and I've been a father. I've been a pauper and I've been a king. I've been an emperor once. Um, I've been a princess. Um, on the other hand, I've also been a murderer and I've also stolen and I've also cheated and I've also lied and I've also been sick and in a lot of pain and I've also been very well off and very healthy. And all of these things that you have been, if you connect with, there's a part of us that is in every single person. And that's kind of what compassion is. Pa people say compassion is, oh, how you feel for another. But people kind of go, oh, yeah, I feel for them. But they don't really mean it. But when they really feel for it is when you remember that in that past life, that may have happened to you or that did happen to you. And you connect with it because you, were, you did all these things. In one of the, in uh, Yom Kippur, a Jewish holiday, it says in there, you know, I have murdered and I have, you know, I have killed and I have disrespected and I have, and people go, oh, but I didn't do all those things. What are you talking about? And the rabbis come back, yeah, you may not have done it now, mm -hmm. but you have done it in the past. You have done it. And that there's a different definition of that. Like you murder somebody by speaking badly about them, having an evil tongue, as an example. You can lie to somebody, not by not telling the truth, but by withholding the truth, mm -hmm. for example. Things that we all do. So when we take that connection and we take that, that, that whole thing in, then we understand that we are one people. And that that spiritual connection is always there, always there, no matter what we do. And that when we hurt other people or harm other people, that we hurt ourselves. We hurt, hurt that connection that we have. And we never allow um, that to, you know, we have to understand that it is about ourselves as well as everybody else on the planet. And so right now we have um, a lot going on in the world. We have so much happening that is hurtful, um, attacks and this and negative energy and attacks back and, and this and that. And um, um, I'll say this once, I don't want the men to get upset at me, but if women were running the world, none of that would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> But it happens to be true, okay? We would not allow that to happen in any way. We don't kill each other's children, and we don't allow our own children to get killed. It just wouldn't happen. Oh. So, so part of me wants to say, okay, we need to let the, find out how to let women totally rule, rule the world so that we can have peace, you know, but... Um, Okay, being realistic, okay. <laughs> on the other hand, we need to add the energy in and that men have a feminine side also and that female side. And um, in Kabbalah, we talk about the Shem and the Shekinah, the Shem being the male energy of the divine self and the Shekinah being the female energy of the divine self. And the Shem and the Shekinah come come together in a divine marriage to make every single human. And this is why, you know, we have that law of attraction where there's certain people that we're attracted to. It's about that energy going in and out. And so the prayer can be allow the Shekinah energy, the female divine self energy, to come out into the world. It doesn't have to be that women take over. I was kind of half kidding, but not really. But I would love that. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I was kind of half kidding, but the real seriousness of it is that 
we allow that Shekinah energy, that divine feminine energy to pervade and that divine energy uh, which protects human beings, that protects our children, protects our grandchildren, protects each human being, no matter what religion they are, no matter what color they are, no matter what they believe, no matter, you know, where they are in the world. Um, we really don't care about those things. We really don't care about the color of your skin or the color of your eyes or any of that. But we do care about that your soul is being nurtured and that you are nurtured and that you will continue to have that nurturing as we go forward. So one of our prayers is that the divine feminine energy come to the head, come to the rise, come to the kingship, come to the queenship come to the control and that we bring forth in every man and woman that divine feminine energy in order to rule, in order to control, in order to allow people to be or not control and allow people to be what they need to be. And that when people are thinking in terms of power and money and all of these things, land and all of these things that they want to, and how other people believe and all these things that we allow the divine feminine to come in and say, be beautiful children, <laughs> you know, be, be soft, be at peace, be in harmony, be love, be the presence of love in front of each other be the presence of the divine love, be the presence of the earth, be the presence of the energy of the earth and the energy of the moon and the other energy of, of a beautiful species called the human species and that that human species be allowed to live in peace and in harmony and in prosperity and in um, and have a golden year you know in every lifetime we have seen that there are challenges on the earth there are wars and disease and ravages and all of these other things happening and we also have seen the opposite it shifts back and there are periods of peace and of harmony and in love and in risings of civilizations that show us that we can be our best. And so it's important not to think that this is the end all in the way we are now, that those things can shift and it can shift again. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I thank you all for being here on this night of the hollows, well, we're almost at the night of the mm -hmm. hollows anyway, we're close enough to it. Um, what I have always done in Halloween, it's a very interesting um, ritual that I have done, besides honoring our, our relatives and honoring our ancestors, um, I have walked with the Ascended Masters, I have walked with Jesus and Moses and Elijah and Buddha, and I've walked with them in the garden, and, and once I asked the Master Jesus once, I said, you know, why do you walk with me on Halloween? Mm, nobody's thinking about me. <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> I, can, I can spend some time with you guys. Everybody's doing all, all sorts of stuff and mm -hmm. stuff, so <laughs> I can be found. And uh, that's an interesting thought. But in your ritual can be any anything that you is including whatever religion or whatever belief or whatever you hold, and take the time though to be with spirit. That's the point, and to spend time with spirit, and to spend time um, meditating and thinking about your relatives and thinking about. You know, what did your parents bring to you and give you? And what did your grandparents bring to you? And what did the rest, your culture bring to you? 
what did growing up in your culture bring to you that made you, that you have passed down to your children or maybe not? And I've had people say, oh, I don't get along with my mother. She didn't bring me anything. And I looked at her and I said, are you the opposite of your mother? She goes, oh, yeah. I said, so she brought you the opposite, which is what you needed in this lifetime. So sometimes when you don't see what the gift is, the gift may be that they made you go a certain way. You know, for example, you know, my mother was way more passive than I am. Okay, and the gift of seeing her being passive, I constantly said, ah, I'm not going to do that as a woman. She doesn't say anything. She doesn't speak up for herself and stuff. See, so she brought that part, that part of her gift, she brought me the opposite and made me stronger. And so when we look at gifts, it's important to see them not in exactly what they are, but what they path they led you to. And sometimes those paths are the real gift that mm -hmm. they led you to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's direct. You know, um, you know, I do certain things like my mother, okay, and my father. Um, and other times it's a byproduct of it, or it's, it's the opposite. So one of the things that we have often believed is that you pick your parents at a soul level. And that you pick them for certain lessons. And so those lessons are prevalent in how you become and how you, you became in the generation and how you might have led uh, the next generation on, you know, knowing that and, and expressing that and being in that and loving that. Okay. Okay, so that was a long introduction of the evening. <laughs> Sure. Um, I'd like to connect, so we're going to hold hands. Just a left hand up, face backwards. I'll turn it back. Hold them. get them up there. We go. You want to sit in the Eddie's chair? This is to make sure you didn't fall asleep before we actually started. He's sitting down. Okay. We got you. Doing good. <laughs> There we are. There we are. <laughs> okay. And take a deep breath. We're bringing in the energy of the season. We ask for the Elohim. Adnoi Elohinu. The Shem and the Shekhinah. We ask for the presence of the Archangel Michael, and we ask him to surround us with a white light circle of protection, and we expand that protection to the circumference of the house. We bring that light in, and we ask for the presence of all the Archangels that they may serve us and assist us and speak to us and help us. We ask for the presence of the Ascended Masters. Specifically, we ask for the presence of Elijah, my guide, and we ask for the guides of every person here be present. We ask that this session be for our highest good. We ask for peace, health, wealth, presence, prosperity, wisdom, love, strength, Harmony, healing, compassion, joy, happiness, 
all good things. We ask that the Ascended Masters speak with us. We ask that the Archangels speak with us. We ask in the thinning of the veil that only spirits of light and love and good and presence and divinity speak with us and be present. And to this we say, Amen. 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 So Dave is going to start with a sound bath for us. And we're going to, if you put your hands up like this while he is playing, and I'm going to go into a meditation at some point in time as he's, as he's playing. But if you can meditate on what changes you need and what you need to know from spirit, what you need to answer, be answered, what questions you might have, and how that energy is going to come in and what you need to go down for the winter so that in the spring we may blossom. You also can close your eyes and be comfortable, right? Yes. Because this could, do we have any length of time? We have an advanced group here. You can go to Tom's <laughs> note that. But yes, for the camera, please. Close your eyes, put your feet on the floor so you're grounded your hands up. Thanks. And breathe. Breathe in.
root in your left foot drawing down into the earth and an imaginary root in your right foot drawing down into the earth. And bring up the earth red energy through your ankles, to your feet, your knees, and to the base of your spine. Tonight we will walk through the veil together and we will experience the lightness, the feeling, the wholeness of spirit. So we will walk through a cave that is going And when we walk into the cave, we will see ruby, red, crystals in the side of the cave. And the red energy of the crystals coming over us, surrounding us. And we will breathe that in and bring it down to the base of our spine first chakra of protection, strength, connection to the earth. Crystals are orange, the orange diamonds. And we see the orange light bouncing off the walls. And we breathe in the orange light and bring it down through the top of our head, in through our mouths, all the way behind our heart, down into an inch below our belly button and we spread that orange light throughout our second chakra it is the color of emotions feeling relationships breathe in that orange color many people have trouble seeing orange because it's about relationships And 
and spread the orange color from hip to hip. Let go of the orange and take a step up into the cave in the color citrine yellow. It's the color of our sun. And there are citrines and yellow diamonds all around the cave. And the yellow color surrounds us. And we breathe in the yellow color yellow energy we bring it behind our throat and into our belly button our stomach area and this is the color of our sun and the color of power the color of our ego control And we spread the yellow color throughout our stomach and abdomen. And we just note here what our own ego wants and our own center of power. We take control of our lives as we bathe in the yellow color. And we take a step forward now, up into the green color, where emeralds are bouncing off the walls. And we breathe in the green color and we allow it to surround our whole body in green. It is the color of love. And we allow the green to spread from shoulder to shoulder, back, our complete chest area is colored in green. And we bring in the second harmonic, which is pink, for our left arm and our right arms. Hugs are pink. Love is green. And feel yourself open your heart right now, even if it's just while your eyes are closed and inside the room in your own privacy. Open your heart much as you can. And breathe. the green to go as much as you don't want to. We're going to step up into the royal blue. This is the color of the throat chakra. We step up into sapphire crystals, sapphire jewels. And the royal blue light bounces off the cave walls as you breathe in the sapphire light into your throat and you spread the sapphire from ear to ear, throat to throat.
think about what you need to say or what you need to hear as the royal blue light surrounds you. And breathe. Now we're going to step up further. The color is indigo blue. And the indigo crystals on the wall come and surround your complete body. you step up to the next level, which is the violet light. And we see the amethyst and the violet crystals surrounding the cave. Allow the violet light to cover your whole body. Breathe it in from your top chakra all the way down through your body. Violet is the color of transformation, of change. The color of spirit is your connection to the world of spirit. Open your third eye. Open your crown chakra. Be in the violet light. In the center is a violet flame. surrounding you as it is the fire of transformation transforming you to your best you your best self you can be hold the violet flame in your heart in your soul. We are now going to take the next stop step without letting go of the violet flame we're going to keep the violet flame in ourselves because the next step is to step through the veil to the opal light the divine light and we're going to take a step up the color is opal which is white and all the colors of the rainbow 
little specks of gold, the color of the soul, veins of different colors. This is the color of spirit as we have stepped through the veil, which is thinner for the night of the hollows. And in this cave, we are going to seat ourselves on our throne. You can make your throne anything you want. It can be lined. It can be gold. It can be silver. It could be opal. It could be glass. Pay attention to the throne that you are building. What is it? For this is the portions of your subconscious speaking out to you. Build your throne and then sit on your throne. Who is sitting on your side or are you alone? What's your spine? So think about it. Who is there? Do you have a king or queen? Or are you in charge? You're always in charge either way. Think about building your throne and your kingdom. What does it look like? What does the year look like? How healthy are you? How wealthy are you? How wise are you? How prosperous are you? How strong are you? What are the things you love? What is it that you're giving to the world? And what is it that the world is giving back to you? Build your kingdom. See it manifest. Make sure it makes you happy. Don't build something that won't make you happy. Happiness, joy, these are byproducts of the build. You're through the veil. So ask your guides now. What do you need to build? Your mantra should be, I am healthy, wealthy, wise, prosperous, and strong. I am healthy, wealthy, wise, prosperous, and strong.
as you sit on your throne. The ascended masters are coming to sit on your side. Some on your left, some on your right. They are forming a circle with you at the head. The archangels are forming a circle around the ascended masters. All energy is pointed towards you. This is your creation of manifestation of your life, your kingdom, your throne, your life, the best you, your best self. Good evening. We welcome you to our throne room and your throne room. Do not forget to build not just your kingdom on earth, but your kingdom in heaven. For as above, so below. Your ideas are unlimited. Do not think you are confined to your wounds, to the life you have. For you may grow at all times, even when you think you are fighting for health for wealth, for wisdom, for companionship. Part of that fight is growth and expansion. The universe works on the principle of expansion. You expand your horizons, your thoughts, your heart to love, you expand your mind to learn, you expand your heart to love, you expand your abilities to become wealthier, you expand your bodies to become healthier, you expand your mind to become wiser. You expand all horizons. Your earth forgets. You forget that life is about expansion. Instead, you perpetrate fear and contraction. But yet spirit is about expansion, becoming more, building a bigger cup building a bigger chalice in which to hold joy, harmony, peace, love, wealth, prosperity. Build your cup, expand your horizons, expand your concepts, expand love to each other, power to each other, Charity is about bringing your energy to others, giving of your energy to others. It is not necessarily about giving money. It is about giving to others, making others happy, joyful, more spiritual, more connected, less lonely. Giving is a natural stance of your heart, part of loving.
Do not limit your concept of giving. Your world makes it think that it's only about money and something physical. And that is not true. That's not true at all. The elderly person that needs you to touch their hand is so much more important than you may think it is. If you are stagnant, cannot help yourself, thinking about yourself, it is time to give to others, to volunteer, to give someone else of your energy, make someone else happy, for it will return and expand your heart, and that is how the law of attraction works. You wonder how to attract others, then expand giving. Give of your heart, give of your soul, give of your mind, give of your money, give of your presence, give of your energy, give of your love, give of your joy, give of your happiness. Entertain another, heal another, help another. Love and love. All of this is about expansion. Once you expand, your body expands. You are healthier, wiser, happier. You worry about this concept of time. And yet time works when you give, for then others give to you and expands your time. It is the word propagation. You propagate more energy for yourself by giving, expanding, sharing. You do this when you share food. Make Christmas cookies for some others who are unworthy. Unbe unbe able to have them uh, themselves. Give, love, expand, share, share your wisdom, share what you have. Make someone laugh, sing them a song, play them a song. Music is so powerful and so shareable on your planet. It is the one language all understand, everyone, from birth through death to the heavens. Hear the angels sing. If you have strength, share that strength with another, with others. If you are accomplished, teach the youth to follow your footsteps. Pass it on to another person, for this is your legacy. If you are a healer, share your healing. If you are a teacher, teach. If you are wise, share. If you can entertain, entertain. Above all, share. 
for this is through the holy veil. The power, the presence of the divine. Share the spirit of the soul. Share happiness. Share joy. Share love. Be present for another person who needs you to be there. Hold the space for them. Hold the space for another person. Be their strength. By doing so, your strength will triple. Return sevenfold. of healing is about sharing energy. It is about channeling divine energy, which is healing, spiritual energy, which is healing, and placing that energy in knowledgeable base inside, sharing wisdom which is what your medical professionals do. They share their wisdom to heal. As you grow older, it doesn't mean you should stop sharing. Volunteer. Spend the day at a senior center. Spend the day sharing with other people. Share joy. Be there for someone else. We would like to tell you that we have total peace, but our peace is always dependent on you being in peace. We bring you into our veil, our realm, so that you may be at peace, even if it is for the moment. Share with someone how to go through the veil and be at peace. If you are sharing from your left brain, it is so, it is okay, but you may not feel the energy of sharing that energy from your right brain, your heart, your soul. At all times when you share knowledge from your left brain, drop down into your heart and share with your clients, share with your friends, share with those who are surrounding you. A piece of your heart Show them how to open that heart. 
For it is the missing link in humanity. When we say give or share, we are saying so because what you are really needed to do is to show people how to open their hearts, to share their hearts, to share that energy, come from love. If you are teaching not from love, you are missing how they hear it. We hear music when it is authentic from someone's heart. It makes us move. It makes us feel. That is true in every amount of teaching, sharing, healing, caring, entertaining, being, wisdom, acknowledging, consulting. It matters not. Share from your heart, from love, from the power of presence, from the divine soul, from the power of the divine power, which is a part of you. Each of you owns that part of divinity, and you may share that part of that soul with others. Now more than ever, ever your world needs openings of the heart togetherness oneness one body one soul we are one tribe split into 13 tribes which populated the world. Don't let anyone not tell you you are one. For we are one. One tribe. When you make decisions on whom to believe, believe those who speak from their hearts. Believe those who speak from their souls. Believe those who believe we are one tribe, one mass, one earth, one planet, one country, one place. And in each and every journey from that, we are a piece of one heart and one path to be together as one. To be the best we can be individually, to be the best we can be as one. Do not follow those who do not bring you to your best self. The self that is the most giving, loving, compassionate. For all people, everyone, the rich, the poor, the dark, the light, of all religions, of all countries, not one, all countries, everywhere. Health and wealth and wisdom, prosperity and strength, will never belong to one society, one people, one colors, one religions, one country. This is the lesson. And so some on your planet are learning this lesson the hard way. And some the easy way. But we cannot stop your lesson. We cannot stop the lesson. Only you can own your own lesson. And you can help others facilitate that lesson. 
for all that you give and are and share and be and become your best self and share your best self. For we cannot interfere. We allow. We are not a respecter of man or woman. We are not a respecter. We respect all. There is not one football team that will win over the other. For all are rooted. What is the divine presence if it is just cheering for one football team? We cheer for your planet and that all of you may get through this lesson safely, easily, quickly, and completely. For then you become your own divine beings, a divine soul. We cheer for all. lessons are the lessons and they take many lifetimes many many lifetimes for we have many many mansions and many rooms and each a pit, bit of your soul and each a bit of your journey and so sometimes you may be tired or we get tired watching you. Ah. And sometimes you may be sad and you may feel that you want to give up. But we will tell you that if you give up in this lifetime, you will just do it again and again and again and again. And you have. And that is okay. Sometimes it's time to cash in, cash out, and start all over. But we have given you the lengthening of your days from your ancestors. A true lengthening of your days so that you may learn many of the lessons. A quickened, a quickening of your soul, a quickening of the energy quickening of your paths and a quickening way to ascension. It is the gift. The gift of wisdom of your doctors which have illuminated your lives. The wisdom of your ancestors and inventions and computers and all which has made it easier for you to Focus on one thing. Growth. And your path. If you stop in your 60s, or in your 70s, or in your 50s, you will just begin again. And since you do not go embark on those paths until well into your 40s usually, it is a long path. It is best not to stop. Keep going. For you do have the energy, and you do have the whereabouts, and you do have the strength, and you do have the knowledge, and you do have the wisdom. Each and every path is different. Some are harder. Some are easy. Some seem more joyous and take more energy. Some seem easier and take nothing. But recognize 
Each and every path is what you need to grow and to give and to teach and to become and to stay on the path of ascension and to walk through that now and to lead others. Do not dismiss yourself. Do not think you're less important than the other. For each path is different. Do not compare yourself. You are given, given. You have been given all which you need. That is unique to you. Which is why you cannot compare. If somebody is wealthy in this lifetime, they are learning those lessons as well, which are others. If somebody is poor in this lifetime, they are learning those lessons of poverty in this lifetime. If somebody is sick, they are learning those lessons of sickness in this lifetime. If somebody is prosperous, they are learning the lessons of time and management and other things. If someone seems to have it all together, they are learning the lessons of sharing joy, sharing what they are, and motivating others. Each lesson is different. If you have not found your lesson, we wish to speak to you. It is the most important that you not think it of something that is mundane. You cannot be on this world just to make money. You cannot be in this world just to have one talent. You cannot be in this world just to excel in one area. For you are living in times of multiplicity. Where you live multiple lifetimes from your ancestors. Where they lived 20 years, you live 80 or 90 or sometimes 100 or more. And each of those are lessons in the decades that are different. Some to raise children of a certain flavor. Some not to raise children. Some to bring about something grand. Some to bring about happiness of maybe a few. All is different. All is as it should be. But whatever it is, it is not time to stop. It is not time to be still. It is not time to think the world is just horrible. When you add into the energy of this world, you are given. We need you. You are our warriors, spiritual warriors. Warriors of the heart and warriors of the soul. The Archangels would like to bring you now healing energy. Archangel Raphael will lead a healing session. Just sit back and breathe in angelic healing Thank you. 
take this energy into your bodies, into your hearts, remember what it sounds like, remember what it feels like, and anytime you need healing, breathe in the angelic healing of the Archangel Raphael. And now, we thank you for coming through the veil on a holiday when it is thinner to visit your ancestors who are among us, to hear the wisdom, to hear the ideas, to go back into your hearts and your soul, and to regain the strength of your paths. We thank you for being with us. We invite you at any time to come through. And we invite you to share. Go with this knowledge that it doesn't stop, that the energy goes on and on, that the love goes on and on, the healing goes on and on, the divine energy goes on and on, the oneness goes on and on. No that you are part of a soul family. You are part of the one child. And that the energy of that can overcome those who are not at peace. Bring the energy of peace to your planet, the energy of love to your planet, the energy of oneness to your planet. And we thank you for being here. Go in peace. Shalom Halechem. Go in peace. And now we're going to turn from the, the veil back through down into the violet realm. We're going to step back down into the violet flame. We're going to take with us the opal and the violet flame with us in our hearts and in our souls as we step back into the indigo blue and step back into the royal blue back into the green and the pink harmonic back into the yellow of our world, back into the earth, you feel the ground on your feet as we come back into touch with the planet on our earthly connection. Know that the Shekinah, the divine feminine is with us as we come back down into the orange energy of our emotion and back down into the red of our planet and ground ourselves touch our feet to the ground and we step down from that back into the room into your chairs feel your chairs feel the feet on the ground and now we would like to just say a thank you for Elijah and the rest of the Ascended Masters and the Archangels as we come back into the room. Open our eyes. And breathe deeply. Thank you for being here tonight. I am Cheryl Miller Glover, my husband Dave Miller, of the Sound Bath. We are touchmotherearth.com. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you.